This is Dilyak Gumpa, the original seat and home of both the Venerable Dapsang Rinpoche and Dilyak Drupan Rinpoche. In 1990, the previous Dapsang Rinpoche traveled from Nepal back to Dilyak Gumpa, his original monastery in Kham, carrying with him many holy objects such as statues, ritual musical instruments, tonkas, silk brocade, and other items. Before leaving the monastery to return to Nepal, he told the monks there, when I return again, I will come from Hong Kong and won't be carrying anything. He lived up to this prediction by making his next appearance at his monastery as a small child. Not only was he not carrying anything, but this time he himself was being carried. Here the sacred black hat lama dances are being performed for this special occasion. Six monks from Dilyak Gumpa searched for over two months, finding over 300 babies born in the mouse year. A list of the names of all the possible candidates was brought back to the Karmapa. He said to search again, but this time in three groups of two people each. There was some confusion as it turned out that the names of the true Tuku's parents were not in the government lists as they had just arrived in that area. During the second search, he was finally found, and the Karmapa immediately knew he was the right one, according to the letter he had written. The circumstances surrounding the baby's birth were exactly in accordance with his prediction letter. The new Tuku was only ten months old when the first picture was taken at his birthplace in Kham. He was born on the third day of Sagadawa in 1996 in Zatushin, eastern Tibet. The family are poor nomads and the Tuku is the seventh son in the family of six older brothers. With the accompaniment of friends and lay people from Zatushin, the entourage arrived at Rinpoche's Dilyak Monastery in Kham, which presently has over 200 monks. Upon their arrival, everyone heard the celestial sounds of Tibetan ritual music that greeted them everywhere. This was quite astonishing because in fact no actual musicians were playing any instruments. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Here is the new 4th Dopo Shalri Rinpoche, who was recognized by His Holiness Karmapa in 1998. He is the first Tulku to be recognized by the Karmapa outside of Tibet. The previous 3rd Dopo Shalri Rinpoche spent most of his life in meditation retreat at his She Gompa, high in the mountains of Dopo on the Tibet-Nepal border. Before he died, due to his intense devotion to the previous Jamgung Kantral, he offered his entire monastery to him. Tenzin Dorje tells us more about this new Tulku, who will be living at Pulahari with Jamgung Kantral. incarnation, and then now he recognized Shilri uh, Rinpoche. Recently we brought him here from Tulpo. Kamapa recognized him. Kamapa gave uh, us a uh, uh, recognition for uh, Shilri Rinpoche in the end of 1996. And we sent uh, our two monks from here, like Chuk Gelsen and uh, Sonam Chetan, they went to Tulpo last year, 1998. We sent back photo mm -hmm. to show to Kamata. Mm -hmm. And Kamata decided, yeah, this is the his reincarnation. He says, so and so, father and mother, son, is the vision to go. Mm -hmm. Why I have a responsibility of taking care of this Tulpo's reincarnation? Previous Shirin was born in Manam, you know. I think he passed away in the end of 1990. But he was a disciple of second Jambun Kumpu. Baldin Chenzi was his disciple. Mm -hmm. That's why he always feel very close connection with the Jambun Kumpu. And Shirin Rinpoche offered his 
monastery and all property, but he belonged in Tolpo. He asked Jamuru Bhaji to take care. That's why uh, just before he passed away, he requested Bhaji and we take care of the, after he passed away, his cremation and everything. And also I built a small strip of Shiru Bhaji, I think you will see it in our um, golden strip temple. Now we found him, and the future he can be good friend of the you know, he can help for his activity, mm-hmm. and then also for Buddha Dharma and Kamaka use lineage, and plus he can help as much as for Jamaka. That's my wish. Each year on the 12th day of the Tibetan fourth month, Serpu Monastery holds its Tonka ceremony. This has been a tradition passed down through centuries. Here it is being seen, carried up the slopes for display. This new Tonka was recently designed and constructed by an American couple, Terrace and Leslie Temple, with the help of a Lhasa tent factory. Although this couple has been making Tonkas for many years, this is their first applique Tonka. It is over 10 stories high and weighs more than one ton. After raising funds, buying the silk, having some of it dyed in the right colors and designing, the whole process took over a year and a half to complete. After completion of this tanka, they made a second impressive three-story high Mahakala tanka at the Karmapa's request that is also unfolded annually just before Tibetan Losar. The Karmapa has now requested them to make two more large tankas when enough funds are raised. On the way to Lhasa from Surpu Monastery is the area of Turlung De Chincheng. Here we witness the annual horse racing festival. The horse racing festivals are traditional all over Tibet in the summer months. This is an enjoyable break from the generally difficult country life of most of the people. Generally the riders have had lots of experience and practice and have perfected their skills. They often perform amazing feats while riding a horse at a full gallop. But occasionally, as seen with this rider, not everyone can hang on so well and they end up riding the dust. We need companions with whom to tread our path. If we want to cross the river, we need a boatman. The boat would not move on its own. If we rely on wrong companions or friends, we can be led astray. So we want to find the right companions and travel together on the right path. That is the Supreme Sangha. His Holiness the 17th Gyawa Karmapa wrote a poem paying homage to all the wondrous lamas of the snow land of Tibet. It reads as follows, Shining like the glowing red clouds at sunrise, your dharma robes adorn the grace and beauty of your presence. Excelling even the majestic snowy peaks, I pay deep homage to you who heals the suffering of mind and deeds 
through the essence medicine, which is the nectar of your amazing skillful means.